Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the next edition of the Miracle Seating Podcast. I'm your host, Christian Miracle, and I am here once again with my guest, FGC. Hey, it's Austin awesome. It's Cigar Racing, FGC, and I wasn't, able to, I wasn't almost able to make it here today, but I'm glad that I did, and I'm glad to be back for another pair of brief prediction for Backlash today. Oh, yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, once again, I'm going to let you guys know that I'm contacting him via Skype because for some reason we live so far away from each other. <laughs> <laughs> then again, that's a Can't good way to have guests on my podcast. They do that a lot. It's like having a phone call on the radio. All yeah. right, well, ladies and gentlemen, what's going on is we're going to be going through the predictions to WWE Backlash 2017, which takes place Sunday, May 21st uh, on the WWE in Network in Chicago, Illinois. <laughs> um, in, and later okay. on, after later on after we're done with the Backlash predictions, I'm going to be continuing with NXT TakeOver Chicago predictions. FGC will not be joining me for that because, as of right now, he has some business to take care of, so we're going to try to make this quick. Mm-hmm. And if you, um, hear background no- oh. if you hear background noises as well, it's because he's on Skype. There's things going on in the background. It happens. Get over it, guys. <laughs> All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, um, we're going to go through each match um, as follows. Uh, but we're not going to, once again, I'm going to let you guys know, we're not going to count the pre-show, because like I always say, the pre-show is not part of the scheduled event, in my opinion, anyway. It's my opinion. Opinions may differ, but, well, it's only shown to those who have the WWE Network. Anyway, that's pretty much everybody at this point. All right. And since um, in-ring debut going to be today, uh, in the pay-per-view at Backlash? Yes, indeed. Jinsuke Nakamura going to be making his SmackDown Live debut since he... Technically, first appeared a month and a half ago. Is that one moment when you realize it takes a month and a half for somebody to make their actual first match? And at a pay-per-view. Yes, indeed. All right, well, anyways, speaking of Shinsuke Nakamura, however, yes, indeed, he's going to be making his debut match uh, for SmackDown Live as he goes one-on-one with Dolph Ziggler. And FGC, what do you think about this one? Oh, uh, well, I want Shinsuke to win, but I have a feeling Ziggler is going to win the, uh, him cheating in some type of way. I, that's all I really got to say, because, yeah. Well, Ziggler is going to pretty much cheat his way into winning this one. Oh, uh, well, for some, for some people, like a, a match between Ziggler and Nakamura. Like a cheap, like a cheap victory? <laughs> yeah. Well, some, for a lot of people, like uh, a, vic- a match between Nakamura and Ziggler is... Something they've always wanted to see for a long time. <laughs> but nevertheless, I'm actually going on the side of Shinsuke Nakamura here to get a victory, or, like you said, Dolph Ziggler wins by controversy to continue this feud. I wonder what. I wonder if he's going to be going into the Money in the Bank ladder match. I don't know. <laughs> well, All right, yeah. let's go to the next one. We have another match going on. Luke Harper versus Eric Rowan. Harper versus uh, yeah. Rowan. <laughs> that is a match... I don't think we ever seen that on pay per view yet, even though they've clashed so many times in the past. Huh. Mm-hmm. Nevertheless, um, who are you gonna go for in this one? Luke Harper. Luke even, Harper. even though these two have been getting pushed a lot lately, but it seems like it really hasn't worked out well as big of a push they've gotten. So Luke Harper has been on a roll uh, as of late with Orton and Wyatt with the Orton and Wyatt story, and this match may be the big push for Harper. So yeah, not. Harper may be winning this by DQ. It may or may not be the moment. We'll have to just wait and find yeah. out. Moving forward, uh, I'm going to go on the side of Luke Harper as well. However, I'd be surprised if Eric Rowan pulled off a victory here. Like, because, honestly, like, there's, like, so many so many crazy things he's been doing lately. Like, recently on Talking, recently on Talking Smack, he actually appeared... Uh, he had a balloon in his hand, and he just busted it in front of Renee Young and pretty much laughed his ass off. Yeah. I want to show you something that's going to make me laugh. Guess what the balloon pops it. Ha, 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 If anything, that laugh is more creepy than anything else. All right. FGC is adjusting his headset, ladies and gentlemen. That's all right. So if you heard a crackling noise, that's what that was. There's nothing wrong with my audio system. You understand it, guys? <laughs> All right, it's next match. next match is a six female tag team match. The Welcoming Committee, which is the team of Natalia, Tamina, and Carmella, 
I think James Ellsworth is, should be on the team, even though I don't qualify as him. But I don't think he's a female. I don't know. <laughs> uh, not sure. <laughs> Versus the team of Naomi, Becky Lynch, and Charlotte. Yeah. Uh, you want to answer this one first? Well, um, I, I want to say I want to root for the welcoming committee, but I honestly think that <laughs> team face, I'll t- call them team face or something, I don't know. Okay. Team Faces and Charlotte. <laughs> I, I'm going with the, the welcoming committee. Ah, uh, well. They seem like the dominant uh, role in the uh, women's division. Yeah, so right now I've been a little confused about what's going been going on, but in some ways they got a point. Yeah. They got some good points to show. And like, um, yeah, welcoming committee. Welcoming committee, indeed. You're either with us or against us. Against us. Yeah. <laughs> what does that remind you of? Freaking Nexus? <laughs> you want the Nexus or are you against us? <laughs> All right. Sami Zayn is going to be taking on Baron Corbin as well at this event. <laughs> Sami Zayn versus Baron Corbin. For some reason, like, uh, Sami, once again, has been... I've, I saw recently on Raw, he's been contacting Kurt Angle a lot. Mm-hmm. No, I'll call you, okay? <laughs> I'll call you. <laughs> Kurt making sure that he's the one who's going to call, <laughs> which he obviously won't. Mm-hmm. All right, but um, Sami Zayn versus Baron Corbin. Who are you going to go for this one? Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin, huh? He needs a great push to make himself as a main event status. Plus, Sami is already pushed as the ultimate underdog. So I'm going to give this one to Baron. I'm giving it to Baron mainly because Sami Zayn has yet to even impress me whatsoever <laughs> since the main roster. Which is a complete shame. But yeah, I'm on the side of Baron Corbin for this one. Uh, anyways, moving forward, let's get into the championship matches. We have three title matches going on. First off, SmackDown Tag Team Title Match. The Usos are going to be taking on Breezango. Fundango and Tyler Breeze. The Fashion Police, the parody of Law and Order. <laughs> yeah, they're entertaining. <laughs> I'm going with... It's about time they finally got did something entertaining because at first I thought they were just, you know, them jobber team. But now they're actually... Doing something. Finally. And yet and yet they still haven't as, uh, decided to make the Ascension go up. I'm still Surprise waiting on that. I'm still waiting on that. Anyway, Usos versus Brizongo. Who are you going to go for? Brizongo. Like I said, they're entertaining, and I just want to see them win the SmackDown Tag Team Champion. Champion. Yep. Well, I don't really like the Brizongo whatsoever, but I admit the fashion files is really hilarious. Like the one time... When they actually appeared and they said, like, that's jaywalking. You know what jaywalking is, right? Uh-huh, yeah. Like, I know what jaywalking that's, is. That's jaywalking. And that's Jimmy walking. <laughs> that was really good. I love that one. But I'm on the... I'm going to go... I'm actually going to root for the Uso. So you and I are on separate sides for this as well. Okay. We'll see. I'm going to fight you. <laughs> fight me. Come on, now, fight me. Kevin Owens versus AJ Styles. Oh, yeah. U.S. title match. Owens versus AJ Styles. How does this matchup sound to you just in general? <sighs> Sounds like it might be the main, the, uh, the star match of the night, probably. Everybody's going to probably be talking about this one by the end of the night. But just imagine if Harper and Rowan was the most talked about in match of the night. <laughs> that, 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 <laughs> that'd be that'd a shocker. Be surprising. Yeah, but that's all right. Owens versus AJ Styles for the U.S. title. Kevin Owens recently just destroyed Chris Jericho and took him out of commission. So there's that to think about. Yeah. So who are you going to go for, Owens or Styles? Owens. And the reason he's going to win, he's going to win it dirty. Uh-huh. Well, just, AJ Styles ain't no guy who likes to win. Actually, well, AJ Styles, he's really good at winning on his own heel or face. doesn't really matter. Yeah. I'm, yeah, on the side of, and... I'm also on the side of Kevin Owens as well. Despite the fact that AJ Styles is my man, I refer to him yeah. as my man. My old man used to be something wrong. <laughs> That's true. He's had the hair like him and everything. But yeah, yeah. I'm going Owens because he's going to win the 30 and keep the belt the next time until Jericho returns, probably. Yeah, probably. Anyway, this goes up to the last match of the night, and this is the most unusual mm-hmm. match I've ever heard of. WWE Championship match. Randy Orton versus, what, Jinder Mahal? <laughs> don't bl- don't blink, blink twice. Now. It's like... You don't have to blink twice and open your eyes. That's actually true. <laughs> I know. I don't know how that's true. Because wasn't he a jobber like a month ago? 
Yeah. He was a jobber, and all of a sudden, he's going to be headlining this event for the WWE Championship with the Scene Brothers. Yeah, I don't know. I'm surprised that he actually got his chance for the championship match, but... Yeah, I uh, I don't know what the hell's going on for this case. Uh, <laughs> from my point of view, I'm honestly just thinking this is just filler for Orton. I want to see how he can do in this type of position <laughs> facing Orton. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going. going for, I'm on the side of Randy Orton for this one. Yeah, same. Yeah, because honestly, I keep thinking this is just going to be filler for Randy Orton's title reign. I could be wrong though, because I remember the one time John Cena versus Sheamus in '09. I thought that was just filler for Cena's title reign. Look what happened. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Tables match. Cena got put through. Sheamus wins. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we just covered up the uh, predictions for Backlash 2017. Uh, it's going to be taking place this Sunday on the WWE Network in America for just nine ninety nine, but for Canada, eleven ninety nine because WWE <laughs> hates Canada. <laughs> I'm going to continue the podcast momentarily. In the meantime, uh, FGC will say his goodbyes for a moment. It was great being here today, again, to do this again. I uh, have a lot of fun participating in this podcast. Thanks for having me, Christian, even though I'll be here next to you, and the next, and the next, and so on. And yeah, I hope you all from this Army will enjoy his NXT predictions, and I'm out. All right, see you later, FGC. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you just heard from FGC. That was really cool. Here at the Miracle Seating Podcast, that was the predictions to Backlash 17. Now I'm on my own. Because he has some business that he had to take care of, and we had to make this really quickly. So it's only going to be me doing this one, alright? I'm going to give you guys my predictions to NXT TakeOver Chicago. Alright, we have five matches on the card. And since it's only me, well, I don't have to wait for someone to guess their opinion. Alright, let's go start off with Eric Young versus Roderick Strong. That should be a really good match as well. They did really good at NXT TakeOver Orlando. Um... I'm going to say I'm going to go for Eric Young because Sanity has been doing very well these days. Um, and because like I'm a big fan of Sanity. They're really good. They're really awesome. I really enjoy it. Um, next match. Singles match for the United Kingdom Championship. For the first time ever, the United Kingdom title is being defended on NXT. An NXT TakeOver. That's going to be fun. As Tyler Bate, who, by the way, is a year younger than me, so I can finally say I'm finally older than somebody in the WWE. <laughs> Tyler Bate versus Pete Dunne. Or is it Pete Dune? I don't know. I'm sorry. I haven't, I'll, I'll be, I'm just going to let you guys write and apologize ahead of time. I actually do not keep up with the United Kingdom stuff uh, because, well, I just never found it interesting. Sorry, guys. So, if I sounded like a complete asshole by mispronouncing the name, I'm an asshole. Sorry. Um, I really don't know what to say about this, but I'm just going to say Tyler Bate. I'm going to say Tyler Bate. Or, as a matter of fact, how about this? I'll just say, I want to just see a great match. That's all I want to say, is a good match. Speaking of good match, a ladder match for the NXT Tag Team Championships is taking place as well, as the Authors of Pain is taking on DIY. Uh, DIY, once again, getting title matches. <laughs> it's okay, though. Um, moving forward, uh, I'm going to go for the Authors of Pain to win this, despite a ladder match not really being in their favor, considering their size, but then again, anything's possible. So, I believe that the Authors of Pain is going to win this one. And, um, let's go to the next one. Triple threat match for the NXT Women's Championship. Asuka versus Ruby Riot versus Nikki Cross. Once again, Asuka defending her title in a multi-female match, just like at NXT San Antonio. Uh, Asuka, Ruby Riot, Nikki Cross. I'm gonna go for either Nikki Cross or Asuka to win this match. They're my two picks to win. I'm fine with either one. And why? Well, mainly because it's opinions, dude. And check and shit. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I know, I know. It's kind of weird when I'm doing this on my own, right? All right, and our main event for the NXT Championship, Bobby Roode versus Hideo Itami. Bobby Roode versus Hideo Itami. That should be very, very interesting as long as Hideo Itami doesn't get re-injured once again. <sighs> He's basically Tony Romo for the Dallas Cowboys. But 
I'm going to go for uh, Bobby Roode to retain the championship because Bobby Roode is glorious. I got nothing against Hideo Itami, but I'm going for Bobby Roode to win. All right, well, I wanted to make that really quick and brief, but those were my predictions to NXT TakeOver Chicago. I'm, once again, I apologize that FGC could not be here for that one. Um, he just didn't have time to do it, so we just had to, we took care of Backlash. All right. Thank you guys for joining me on the Miracle Seating Podcast, and I'll see you guys next time with BCN Rollins for paper review for both NXT Chicago and Backlash. Good night, everyone.